Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Troy, a Total War Saga here today on the channel. We're back with my Prince Paris of Troy mini-series. This is episode 3. We're continuing on from the last episode, slowly but surely building up a Trojan Eastern Empire in Asia Minor, building up for Let's the eventual war the against the Achaeans, the... Myrmidons, Achilles, and Menelaus will set sail soon. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like, subscribe if you're new around here with notifications on, let me know in the comments, feedback and suggestions for the series, and feel free to leave a dislike if you want. I'm going to hold a vote for my campaign series, so stay tuned for that. Uh, once the game is fully released. Got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me an early access copy of Troy and making this Let's Play possible. So a huge thank you to them and their community team. So, we've managed to rendezvous with Paris's main army and we've also managed to bring in some medium tier spears, more archers, basically better quality recruits as we continue to push further south into the rich Asian territory. Now, we've just recently got unlocked to Centaur Warriors, so we're going to be able to bring in cavalry to our army build soon, which is fantastic to see. Uh, joining the ranks of our already other exceptional warriors in the Amazonian uh, skirmishes that we've got. So we're still continuing to push further south. We're going towards our objective of being... Uh, Prims, my father's main heir, and we're just sort of waiting for the Achaean host to, well, basically hit us at Troy or off the Trojan coast. Uh, we've managed to find the Amazonian warriors, uh, the Amazon faction, which is quite cool, so we should be able to get some negotiations uh, with them eventually. Please do take into consideration that I'm using an early access build, and there is stuff obviously. Subject to change. I only have 40 turns in this build. Everything's locked on normal, normal difficulty for both campaign and battle. And once it hits 40 turns, that's it. She's, short. She's all over Red Rover. I can't progress anymore from that point. I have a maximum of 90 minutes um, in my videos. I only can do three videos as well, but 90 minutes. So I'm trying to condense as much action as I can. Uh, within the last couple of Let's Play parts. But here we go. The Trojan horse... Horse? Host <laughs> gathers Trojan horse on the one. So evidently the Denards will wage war at any stage. So we can support the Cho Trojans, which is obviously what I want to do. Even if Manlius of Sparta was to get Helen back. He has to take it by force. So we've issued another royal decree. So we've got Stone coming in as well. So looking at some of the other major factions. This is what I currently own as Paris. A little bit on the coast of Troy, mostly towards the back of Asia Minor there. And we're going to be going against uh, Medon of the Kimi. I, I, don't, I don't know who these guys necessarily are. They're not Trojans. They're not Achaeans. I don't particularly care. <laughs> let's go, uh, let's go against them. We are currently at war with Menelaus of Sparta, Agamemnon, and Achilles, which I'm sure they'll sail over at you some point. We'll call our military allies and continue to expand and conquer, securing more wood resources with a full stack now. So we have two axemen, three proper spear units, and abundance of skirmishes, which is great to see. So we might actually fight this one on the field because my cousin Aeneas is actually on the outside. Obviously don't have access to Aeneas in the build, but however, as he is going to be drawn into this battle, I can showcase his army and his unit model. So let's take the city of Patine uh, with my cousin Aeneas. Come on, Aeneas. Let's have some fun. So we'll also be able to show off as well my newly recruited Centaur Scouts. I currently have four exceptional and unique warriors in my army build. Battle-wise, it's going to be a town battle, and we outnumber them quite significantly. We're going to sit back, relax. We might bring in some archer support, as I've now got my army build a little bit towards what I was liking. I was fielding a lot of... Uh, lower tier 2 spear to sword units previously because I just wanted to aggressively push Harry, be tenacious in conquering as much territory as possible, just trying to get the upper hand of favours against my brother. The Helen mechanic hasn't really 
annoyed us too much. We've also we've we've been able to adequately uh, pay for the food debuff that you get from it and secure the uh, public order. So in this army build, now we have six units of archers. You most welcome to pause and have a look. Here is Prince Paris of Troy, of course, and then we've got our lightly armoured centaur scouts further at the back. They're going to be incredibly useful for running down the enemy combatants because normally that's usually a little bit of a pain in this, but we'll allow my cousin Aeneas to push up and go for it. But there is Aeneas, a descendant of the Romans, of course. And here's his army moving slowly but surely. And so he's got a sort of green, teal sort of color army. And obviously he is of the Trojan faction as well. It will be a similar army build to us. So we've got silver chevrons with most of my archers now, which is fantastic to see. But he's going to earn his worth pushing in. Starting the offensive while we sort of sit back and relax. Oh, but the AI seems to be pushing out against me more than anything. Yeah, so they're sort of not worrying about Aeneas flanking. So Paris's master bowmen are starting to rain fire and death upon the garrison charging out here. They're even moving up some of their own bowmen here. Throwing down some buffs, but they're not turning and facing me as Aeneas pushes in and tries to take the city. We're currently trading with their own archers, but we outnumber them so significantly. Our missiles are going to quite literally knock them off their feet. <laughs> well, that's been wiped out, that unit of archers. That's completely shattered. Aeneas is in the thick of it now. Fighting for Paris. I guess we've sort of paid him off. Come on, I'm, I'm the better cuz <laughs> than Hector. And victory. We have victory here today. Paris lost one man, one rogue archer. Aeneas lost ten. But he's going to get the victory, the glory, the experience, and overall the city. Aeneas's army was quite strong. Um, but he's only link, rank, uh, ranked three. Hmm. You'd think some of these other lords would be a little bit more higher ranked at this time period. So we're going to be pushing now further south securing the Tro Trojan coast just off the island of Lesbos and destroying a another faction in the Far East here up is going to come in and give us a little buff even though we don't have slingers in the army that's fine um, we really haven't had the food to spare because we are well we haven't artificially inflated our economy like in the Menelaus series I do recommend going watching that after you've watched this if you haven't already but yeah, we're losing a thousand grain per turn now. We are making a decent amount of wood, stone, bronze, and gold. But grain, we definitely need to secure as we push eastward. So hopefully we're here when we get take uh, Temnos, we should be able to do it. We've got a secondary army now, mostly made up of my weaker units from the previous build, with Nerus, who is a fighter. Just thought I'd mix things up. Range-wise, Paris is doing tremendously well. But a fighter, we can sort of throw in and allow him to be a little bit more part of the action. So we'll let occupy here. We're still waiting for the Achaean onslaught to cross the Mediterranean while we're securing Troy's legacy. But we're slowly getting closer to now Amazonian territory. We've got a pretty good relationship with them. However, they do have a pretty cool and unique unit pool which you have to watch out for. But we're sort of picking off the scraps of the other kingdoms on the coast here. Uh, the King's Hand reward, 520 gold as well. Okay. Uh, Prim's Heir. So we are still leading that favoured son. We are still currently our mythical allies, spreading influence as well. Immortal glory. So a lot of missions issued there for uh, Paris. Now Prim's Heir, we are still very much in front, ahead of my brother Hector, which is fantastic to see. So we're still continuing to get those buffs up nice and high and we'll continue to push further south. Now most of that army is made up of lighter spears. We might actually have to get it to push. So Paris is ranked 19 now. We didn't even get Menelaus this high only to about 16. So we'll attack with a smaller host. Ah, really? Two units of spears, two archers are really holding that off. 
The Amazonians aren't pushing down to help us there, which is a shame. Donned in red war paint by the look of it. And Izzy in... No, he's not in strike range just yet. Well, if you have to wait, you might as well build some additional siege equipment. We're 29 turns into the Let's Play. So, we've still got 10 turns remaining. Okay, now Paris can come in and help out. And it looks like the Amazonians there are currently raiding. A lot of skirmishes, a lot of archers in their unit build. But, as we're technically not allied with them, we do... We are growing better quality relations with them. Maybe we should strike against them uh, later on. We'll just have to see. Depending if the Achaeans come, because I don't particularly want to open up another front uh, just yet. But there's some of the units there. Amazonian swordsmen, Amazon archers, and slingers, and there is their uh, faction leader as well, Hippo. And uh, what else have we got here? We've got access to anything special? No, not overly. So we're currently negotiating with Aeneas. We want to try and get our... Yes. Grain back in surplus. Gold, I haven't really been using gold too much, and it's more so for higher tier Amazon's buildings unite. and units and stuff. I've tended to need to rely on gold a lot more. So we're actually got 26k uh, grain now, which is quite significant. We're making 200 bronze per turn, 400 stone, and 1.5k stone, which is great to see. But grain wise, just I think strategically where some of my allies have taken territory. We haven't secured the grain nodes on the eastern side here. But hopefully as we push further south towards Amad Amazonian territory, we should be able to secure it. Taking uh, Silo from there. Ah, Menelaus has finally marched over and has taken Lesbos by storm. The Achaeans have invaded the island. Well, we're going to have to put a stop to that. We'll send, of course, Paris to deal with Menelaus and face him 1v1 in battle. Hopefully this time he can hold his own hand-to-hand <laughs> in -hand and one-on-one -on -one combat. But with only 10 units, I feel comfortable for the Battle of Lesbos. Okay, so Paris is marching north. I wanted to continue to go westward to continue on my front. Thankfully, I didn't declare war upon the Amazons because I would have been drawn into a... A two front of war. For some reason they haven't taken it here, but we'll send through Nerus, my second general and fighter, who's got a lot of spears, nothing overly too crazy. Some of them have decent chevrons because they've been moved out of uh, Paris's main army, but the quality medium to higher tier units are there. And now we've secured more wood, which I don't know if we necessarily read. We'll repair and uh, replenish where we can, and we'll assist the Amazonians in their conquest. So Menelaus is still hiding out in my city now. He's only level 3. And they still haven't taken uh, my further territory here. So we might even look to push against that. We'll see. Anyway, let's have a battle against Menelaus. He could very much push out against me. Uh, Hector and his forces are coming up. I wonder if any other... Denans or Achaeans will cross over. Okay, we're still... Wow, we're so far up in the air Prince. contest there. We're flying away with it. So, let's fight Menelaus on the field. He will have his garrison coming in. Paris level 21, Menelaus level 3. I wish they were sort of scaled a little bit higher, but I do understand that this is only locked at normal difficulty. But my army build is far superior in quality and chevrons. And even in its unique unit mix, he does have a fair few units of battle axes and some slingers and a uh, bit of a mishmash of slingers and stuff and whatnot. But he's not going to do incredibly well against my medium spears, medium axemen, and my tremendous, now, gold chevron archers. Let's go with a nice, clean day. And let's throw back Menelaus into the siege. See? Siege? Siege? <laughs> Throw him back into the sea from whence he came. My archers are going to be able to absolutely smash anything that comes up against us, along with my Amazonian warriors, and we'll be able to pivot and flank and, and rotate with my centaur cavalry. So, let's break up with my heavy units here. There's a couple of ways of attack to retake my town here on the island. So, we'll split up into three uh, margins there, and we'll probably pull my cavalry further back. 
So we'll make a front line here of three or so. And archers wise, we could sort of clump them up just in the area that we're going to get the most shots off. Because if we can target and single out individual units, we should be able to wipe them out. Also, we've hit the unique upgrade for Paris, enabling him to be mounted on a small chariot. He's got a rider helping him out, uh, which is great. It will greatly improve his maneuverability on the battlefield and also his ability to kite. He can shoot while moving now with that upgrade and will have a charge bonus, but I imagine he's probably a little bit more exposed now. But uh, Paris is on a purple mounted chariot. Check out his wheels. <laughs> Looks sick. <laughs> right. More infantry on the left and right. But let's get stuck into, for the first time, the Trojans face the Achaeans. Paris of Troy will battle out Menelaus, king of Sparta. All right. Let's get stuck right into it. And the favor's a little bit more towards their side than the order is off. So we'll push up, we'll close the distance, and we'll hold the choke point here. Which seems to be probably favoring us more than anything. Uh, if I move you up here, you're probably not going to be able to make the entire difference. We'll start flanking and wrapping around with some units. We do have the skirmisher supremacy. Uh, they've actually got six or so, so maybe only just numerical skirmisher supremacy. But we have quality. We're going to be able to absolutely rain fire in death and rip raw through these slingers. It's just a matter of if my guys can sort of halt there. But the Amazonian skirmishers are firing against anything that gets close to us. The centaurs are wrapping. And then... Paris's bow masters are reigning. Firing death upon. Menelaus is pushing the front line. Will allow Paris to try and focus and target him out with his various abilities. While Menelaus is dropping his. A defender pushing a little bit too far forward there from what I experienced in the Menelaus campaign can't really hold his own against a fighter or a lover <laughs> I don't know who's going for the intro but yeah pushing that far as a defender you probably should be pulling back a little bit slightly there okay we're going to try and wrap around with our four units along with our cavalry to try and disrupt their skirmishes the centaur scouts are going to get a small little javelin volley off here but they should be able to run down Menelaus's skirmishes like carving a cake. Like a hot knife through butter. We're going to carve them down. They did a nice little sort of cavalry bunny hop there. Uh, I think that animation was in 3K. I quite like that in that game. Okay, so my front line is buckling a little bit here. Probably because he's got a lot of aggressive melee buffs pushing forward. And he also, you forget that Menelaus has decent defense buffs. So we're really going to have to rely on my archers doing... Uh, most of the work. Paris reversing the cart there. But we're currently surrounding Menelaus. Bring him down. Bring him down. Normally I would say like a thousand denarii for a lordship or something. Or I guess you can get a, a year's supply of grain. Or <laughs> you can either get a year's supply of grain or, or a lump grain sum. <laughs> I don't know. And a, it's a bit of timber to build your house in. But we've managed to defeat Menelaus, destroying his 10-unit army and the garrison inside. Paris is fighting Menelaus in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He stabbed him in the back, just like his brother Hector did in the movie. <laughs> but we've managed to throw back Agamemnon's brother, Menelaus, and... Oh, exceptional warriors found. Right, so we've, we've managed to gain access back to the Amazonian warriors, which we lost. And we've managed to get Menelaus's shield, plus 12 morale. That's fantastic. So let's go into the equipment tree, because he's, he's already got a fair bit here. Ah, bronze plate. Yeah, let's go with that, plus d uh, defense. Ah, so it's similar to that of Warhammer. Depending on legendary lords, they have unique equipment and buffs. Um, so sometimes you're actually better of, of targeting and wounding and, and killing uh, legendary lords. But Menelaus's shield, although... Um, of course, yeah, Paris can't equip it, but 
I guess you would just put it as on his, the side of his chariot. <laughs> Some men, put him as his rims or something. But it looks like an, another Achaean army's come up here, and swift-footed Achilles has landed on the island. And oh, he's going to push in here. After the defeat of Menelaus, the gods have sent down swift-footed Achilles. Does Paris have to battle him out too? And, oh, we're getting drawn in there. So, the Achaeans have sailed over. But instead of going straight for Troy itself, they've hit the island of Lesbos to maybe get a bit of a launching pad. A bit of a staging ground to launch their invasion onto the mainland of Troy. And as Hector is running away with his tail between his legs, Paris has to deal, um, <laughs> deal with... Achilles as Prim's favorite son. So Achilles has bought a slightly larger army, army, and he is yeah, he's fielding a lot of infantry, which is a lot better. But he's only rank five still. Paris is now twenty-two. Auto resolve wise, massively in my favor. But let's throw back Achilles and allow him and basically kill him before we ever get the opportunity to shoot him in the Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> in the city of Troy. Let's fight the Myrmidons and Achilles. Yeah, so it's mostly only bronze anyway. A uh, couple of units of clubs. Skirmish wise, not too much. So we have skirmish and supremacy. They're going to try and close the distance and, and probably attack us. So it's interesting that they attacked me in Lesbos rather than going straight for Troy itself. I wonder if they're sort of like they target the human player a little bit more. But we supported the Trojans, so maybe they targeted us out on that one. So, let's have a quick look at Achilles' army. Where's Achilles? Oh, he's hanging down in the bush. Typical. We've got a limited amount of time, and <laughs> I wanted to get a really cool shot of Achilles is hanging out in the bush. <laughs> but here are his famed swordsmen and warriors. If we've beaten Menelaus, can we beat... Swift-footed Achilles. I'd say so. My army build is really good. We've done tremendously well in the limited amount of time. I'll, I'll show you the, how many settlements I've taken and the stats and stuff. And hopefully I should be the larger and, and biggest faction. So even though we're the defending power in Troia Total War Saga, what are we in? 30 turns in or so, and the AI has taken the initiative to cross the Mediterranean, regardless of how much they've built up their territory in the mainland of Greece, which is great to see. That's what you want. You want the AI to be aggressive against you. Um, I obviously attacked probably around about the same time in my uh, Menelaus series. I managed to wipe out the original Troy garrison inside, uh, the, the original Troy army of 13 units, but I couldn't get past the garrison. If I had a similar army build to that of the Paris, it could have been a different story. Here. So, looking at the angles and channels in this, we're going to have to really try and push up here, because I don't particularly want to be fighting in the forest. So, if we can push up and rapidly go, high octane, Victory be incredibly aggressive, push up, make sure we're fighting in the open field, my archers are going to be able to Fire upon the Achaeans without too much obstruction. So we'll push up here with my infantry. And we've also got additional reinforcements coming with my secondary army. But I'm curious to see how Achilles performs in the open field. Like, it always worries me when the balance of power shifts so much back in the AI's favor. Away from an order resolve like this. So, we're currently trying to focus our fire upon... Achilles, focus everything at him. And we'll Your allow my cat. Oh, I want him to wrap around further, but I guess they're just going to go there. Yeah, just focus on their skirmishes. So we've got Paris trying to aim for Achilles. And my archer's going for him as well. Yep, continue to rain death and throw your, your buffs on him. There we heart. go. Let's get additional aim. Okay, and my cavalry should be able to just run down the remaining stragglers. Paris has now moved up. And now everyone's firing at Achilles because most of his army's gone. Oh no! 
There we go. We knocked out Achilles with a volley. We only just missed it there. But Achilles has been sent to Hades. We only lost 629. Achilles lost his entire army. And the faction of Pythia has been thrown back. So I would have liked to beat Cuddy's Achilles, but no. <laughs> we went right through his chest. <laughs> and now he's been sent back. We'll take on the replenishment. And we also get a thousand food, of course. Oh, so he's been knocked down, but another army's coming. Oh, we should be able to run down the remaining stragglers. So we're 36 turns in. I'm going to go all the way to turn 40 just to show you guys that it does end. Um, what else we got here? Uh, was there anything sort of bronze-plated Zoster? Uh, there was nothing sort of overly unique that we got from... Achilles, like, a spear or what something. Now, after that defeat, do these guys actually want peace? Because we're only at war with Sparta and Pythia now. No longer the Achaeans and their allies. We'll finish off the last of them here, and we'll retake the island for the Trojans. Their invasion, first time around, was not successful. Maybe in the future they sort of attack in multiple Trojan directions. I don't know, but 36 turns in, the Achaeans invaded. They seem to be bringing more units further north, and it also seemed, it seems to look like my brother Hector is intercepting anyone that sort of comes into the naval area of the Trojans. We'll push back, get some replenishment. Okay, and we'll push back down now, and throw them back. Ah, oh, Menelaus is back, with 11 units there hiding in the fog of war. Okay. Uh, we should be enough to sort of push out against him. But army build wise, not very good. Oh, that red is a little bit deceiving, even though it's... They're taking attrition, that's the icon. But Hector's got a fair few armies, which is great to see. So... Ah, so, okay, right, so we can probably put... We can open up another front against Asia. Um, so here are the Amazonians. They're doing quite well towards the south. Can I join your war? Because I want to get sort of better relations with you. You don't like me overly too much. I'm currently r strength ranked two, however. So we've got an additional army here pushing further south, assisting with the Amazonian invasion and getting more territory for Troy. So, so far, if we probably were on par, I don't know how we would have done in those fights, we've definitely built up a adequate defense against any Achaean host coming over. But we're still hemorrhaging a lot of grain at the moment. Okay, pushing in the north here now. Menelaus is up for round two. Once we get the movement, we'll push him back. Okay, he's still hanging out there. He's going to run back out of his defensive position. Oh, why are you going back there? There we go. And we'll auto-resolve this one out. Once again, Paris is having a glorious victory against the Achaeans, defeating Menelaus twice. Now I'm sure he's going to be battle scarred. And I wonder if we can take anything else from him. Poor bugger. And you're holding out well. So turn 39 here now. Here are the stats. Here are the equipment. Here are the records. We have 21 regions, four, four provinces owned. So we are the major power in the east now, along with the Amazonians, maybe Odysseus and, um, I guess, Achilles. There. But you're most welcome to pause and have a look at the stats. 21 I did in 39 turns. I have no idea how anyone else sort of did. But unfortunately, guys, I've got to wind things down. Thank you very much for watching episode 3 of my Total War Troy uh, Total War Saga Troy Paris mini series. Got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly for providing me early access and making this short Let's Play possible. So a huge thank you to them and their community team. So I went down a little bit of a different path in this one. I wanted to go down sort of the empire building route, see how much I could build up, and then I didn't even know if the Achaeans were going to attack. Thankfully they did. They came in full force as well. Hector's actually gone all the way over to Greece. He's been quite aggressive. I've managed to build up a decent empire and throw back Achilles and Menelaus twice. I guess he wants to earn some renown. <laughs> Uh, and sort of level up a bit with my father because he hasn't... I basically conquered all the non-aligned um, 
allies there. But thanks for playing. You've reached the end of the preview build. Give it another try or switch factions for a different campaign experience. So there we go. That's it. She's all over Red Rover. And I've got to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Leave a like or a comment. And subscribe if you're new around here. If you haven't already, it really helps out the channel. And the videos on the algorithm. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay tuned for more content on the channel. Much love from Australia. My name has been Simsy. Goodbye.